All right, joining us on MSA News is our Head of Physical Preparation, Kelvin Payne. G'day, Kelvin. How are you? Good, thanks, Tony. Um, first first yeah. of all, how are you finding isolation? Um, yeah, it's pretty challenging, obviously. Uh, we've got a young family, so I've got um, a five-year-old next week and a two-year-old in August. So trying to keep them occupied is interesting. Um, but wife's a CRT or casual leave teacher, so she's not at work at the moment, which is advantageous for having the kids at home because she set up a little bit of mini, mini school. Yep. Um, so that takes the edge off it a little bit for me because I can actually get some work done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been challenging, but I guess just enjoying the little things like being at home for, um, you know, breakfast and dinner and those sort of things has been really good because um, I often miss out on a bit of that coming back down the freeway to get home late yeah. at night. So yeah, it's been challenging, but um, yeah, I found a few little positives here and there as well. Good to hear. It's been challenging for our student athletes as well. Uh, I'm sure you've been in touch with a few or your, uh, your Fizz Prep staff has. What's been the biggest thing that uh, kids are talking about in regards to not being at school? Um, I think just the kids miss the interaction. Like, I think I heard Mr Scott talking on MSA News last week about kids is the kids are really the the main part of the school and they make it tick so i think generally the interaction that's um had between their colleagues and the staff and everything i feel like um they're missing a lot um which is natural for us as well like that's what we probably miss as well so i feel like it's probably the main thing that the kids are missing is that just normal interaction they have day to day keeping motivated obviously also another tough thing when you're working on your own that is hard what is the best way for our kids to be keeping motivated at home? Yeah, good question, Tony. Um, this is something we've sort of been addressing the last week or so um, as part of the physical preparation team. So we've had our year eight, year nine and year 10 consultant sessions start this week. Um, and we've sort of been to a drawing to address those issues uh, of keeping motivated. So an oldie bit of goodie is you need someone close to yourself to, I guess, keep yourself accountable. So the old school training partner is definitely one that can um, be advantageous for keeping motivated, just just for training, but also just to um, get through those days. So, you know, you can ask a family member to train with you through all your ADP sessions, or you could split it up with some of your family. Um, you might just have your mum one day, your dad the next day, mm -hmm. your brother or your sister, or even your dog you might go for a run down the park or something like that. Um, another one I think we've tried to, push onto the kids a little bit is because we're using so much um, information technology to facilitate a lot of this is, you know, invite a friend to train on an online platform like we are here on Zoom or FaceTime or those sort of things. Again, that person can be that social interaction or just keeping you accountable, accountable sorry, to the session. Um, even keeping like small um, WhatsApp groups or Facebook groups of from your ADP class or your local club where you train, mm -hmm. where you can, you know, have some post-session banter, some interaction, um, but also the, that accountability to, to a bit of training as well. So I'd sort of say those ones would be really good. Uh, further to that, I would sort of say that uh, use a calendar or a schedule. Your mum and dad probably got a calendar up somewhere in the house where when we do know what the date of return is, uh, put that down as, all right, we've got 21 days to go. Enjoy that countdown of, all right, I've got 12 sessions to go in those 21 days and count them down as you go. That might provide a little bit of motivation just for yourself, but also for your family to um, get through maybe in theory the last three weeks that we might have when we get told there's a few days to go. That's your grand, uh, final, think, that's your grand final day. Yeah, yeah, in theory. Um, I think I had a bit of a look to provide a quote for the year 10s this week. I think this one sums it up pretty well. Don't count the days, make the days count from Muhammad Ali. So this week, year 10s have sort of, I've been pushing that upon them a little bit, but uh, I think that's a good one. It summarises a little bit about motivation, making things count rather than just going through the motions of yeah. every single day. Our ADP classes can be fairly intense at school, especially for the young kids who are just getting used to the whole process of ADP. Obviously, being at home, they're away from that. What should our kids be doing on the home front to sort of keep up to where they should be at school? Yep. Um, 
it's difficult at home because you obviously don't have the equipment um, or the support. So we've tried to make our programs a little bit more, I guess, less reliant on those things. So our team have put a lot of time into making the programs accessible wherever they are. So that all they should need would be, you know, a drink bottle, a towel and a device to access the program. And then it's just a matter of um, accessing the program and going through the, through the motions of the program. So, um, you know, with, with making the exercise a little bit harder, you know, they can think about maybe three, three key things. And this is something we touched on this week again with the year eights, nines and tens in their consultant sessions. Um, they can manipulate the, the speed of the movement or the tempo. So they might add pauses into their exercises right at the bottom of the squat. You might pause and hold that position or you might go through the movement a lot slower. And that's just gonna increase, I guess, the tension of your muscle for longer and it'll work for a little bit longer in exercises. You can obviously increase the rep duration. So Tony, you might be doing a plank at home and you're doing it for 60 seconds, but increasing the intensity up to two minutes, simple as that. And then a simple thing is you might be normally having, you know, a minute's break between everything, but cutting the intensity, cutting the, uh, the rest period down by half will, will simply be able to manipulate how hard or how easy the kids can make their sessions. Um, yeah, we're just trying to be able to implore to the kids that use their imagination because we've been educating them over, you know, their time in ADP about, you know, sets, reps, yeah. that sort of stuff. So um, I think using that in this environment um, will be advantageous for them to uh, get a bit more out of the program as, of through, as opposed to going through the motions a little bit. I'm glad you brought up the word environment because obviously the environment at home is so different to the the luxury environment that we have at school with a big gym with all the gear and, and all that sort of stuff. Yep. What is the best way that our kids could be utilising stuff around home to help them in regards to their maybe weights or whatever that might be and also working in confined spaces? Yep, um, good one. So everyone's been obviously going to the supermarket and they're getting their toilet rolls if they're still available and that sort of thing. But I think we've got through that. But, um, you know, you're going to get some, you're going to get some juice bottles and some milk cartons and that sort of thing. Those things are really good too in, in terms of using for resistance. So you can fill that up with water um, and use them as, I guess, upper body exercises. So something you can grasp onto, but it's going to add a little bit of significant bit of resistance with adding a little bit of water in. Yep. Um, once you've done that and you've done your upper body exercise, um, then you could get all those heavy implements that you're filled with water and then put them into your backpack with your um, books. And then you can implement those, put the uh, backpack on and then do your lower body movements. So you're squatting, you're lunging and so on. Um, that way, you know, it'll overload you a little bit. Won't be as, as good what it would be back at Maribyrnong, but it'll at least be a little bit of a step up from, from just your body weight. So you're only really, you know, limited by your imagination. Um, a simple thing might be for some instability. So a balance exercise is standing on a few pillows and just doing some single leg balance work. So, so really you're just, you're only limited by, like I said, your imagination, as long as you're keeping yourself safe and you're not uh, involving stuff where you can get hurt. Um, yeah, there's, there's many ways where you can go about it. Do we know what a two litre milk bottle filled with water weighs? Yeah, so it should be two litres should equal two kilos. Okay. There so, you go. Yeah, it's not um, super heavy, but it's enough to get some sort of response um, and make the training a little bit harder for you. And it's okay. a bit of fun, like it's a bit of activity, you know, just all right, we've got to gather all the milk bottles up, fill them up. Um, it will help you pass the time before you go to start your session. Yep, no, that sounds like a fantastic idea now videos also in regards to uh, what the kids should be doing i know that the phys prep staff have been producing some stuff that the kids should be watching to help them along with their exercises but are there any specific places on the internet that you suggested our kids go and have a look for some stuff yeah so as you mentioned we've sort of used your knowledge a bit tony and sort of gone into um the world of youtube um and made our own little athlete development program um channel uh so We've provided a few little um, resources for the students to access weekly via Compass. So the kids will go onto their Compass page 
go onto their lesson plan for ADP and they'll be able to access um, these links on there. So the links sort of incorporate um, the weekly training video where that'll sort of give them a setup of their week, what their week looks like in ADP, a summary of the last week and, and challenges we might have um, set the students, but also generally just some interaction by seeing the regular faces they would normally encounter. Um, also on there you'll see, sorry, that was my phone there, Tony. Uh, my uh, weekly challenge video. So uh, the FIS prep staff have also been putting together a few fun activities to engage the students. Um, where they're trying to get them to, to, I guess, get through a task that's quite challenging, but then also share that amongst their, their peers and their staff at their school. So we're looking at some point at starting an Instagram page, but at this point it's just being developed by one of our staff. Um, but we're sharing that amongst um, Compass and Microsoft Teams amongst us all to sort of see how everyone's going with the challenge. Uh, further to that, last one for stuff we can sort of see on uh, Compass is our weekly live sort of session. So normally we have ADP face to face clearly, but um, we can't have that, but we want to have at least some face to face interaction with all the relevant staff you'd normally come in contact with in ADP. So your physical preparation staff being myself, your rehab coordinator and the ADP teachers. So weekly, uh, once a week, we're all meeting, touching base, saying good day, going through, you know, things in the weekly video we want to focus on, um, seeing how we're going with the weekly challenge. And then just then after that, giving them the platform to train. So then they can access myself, ask some questions about the program, um, or ask um, one of our rehab staff about an injury they may have and access to those um, resources to get them back to return to play as quickly as possible. Fantastic stuff. Also, another important thing I would have thought, Cal, was keeping a log of what you've been doing at this time. It's going to be easy to go back in Term 3 and the Fizz Prep staff will be saying, right, so what did you actually do? It'd be a lot easier if you were able to say, here it is, than having to think, oh, well, maybe on this day I did that. Was that a good idea? Yeah, definitely. So the big thing is when we go back into competition and playing, um, we're not going to get much time to actually prep for that. So having an understanding of, say, what you would normally do when this isn't, isn't going on. So I might be um, a NAB League footballer or an A-League um, Youth League player or whatever it is, um, you know what that's going to entail for your normal week. So I would encourage you to write that down and tally up how many hours that would sort of make for your week um, and also what type of activities are in there. So do that task of what's normally in your week and then do it for what you're doing or what you did last week and try and look at the two of them and go, all right, well, there's a significant difference there. I need to probably bridge that gap a little bit. So then when I do come back, my injury risk is going to be... Um, a lot less than would be if you're actually the other way around. Um, yeah, that'd be a good activity for everyone to do just to get an understanding. And I'm like, geez, I'm a long way off this. I need to actually do a little bit more training or vice versa. Yep. Great advice. We should also mention too, if you watched our first episode of MSA News, if you haven't, go and have a look at it. But uh, if you did, you would have saw at the end that we had uh, Todd doing his thong challenge. I think what we might try and do is, we might try and get some of these challenges that you're setting the students on their videos just to show people exactly what's happening and for a bit of fun as well, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Todd's um, been putting a lot of research into it um, and our own staff have sort of been engaged in it a fair bit as well. So we thought it's going to be great to see the kids get involved because, you know, they live online. So we might as well engage them on a platform they really enjoy and those sort of tasks. Um, so, yeah, we can easily filter that through to you guys and add yeah, that on there. It'll be like the TikTok of uh, Fizz Prep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Kel, thanks so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. Some great advice there for our kids on how they can uh, stay happy and healthy throughout this uh, period in time. And, mate, we'll keep in touch with your department over the term two and uh, find out other ways and things that we should be doing, uh, what we should be doing at home. No worries, Tony. Thanks for your time and um, good to see you.